Hi guys, every video I ask if you have any comments, concerns, you want to help with something, uh, drop me a line. And so I decided to create a new video that, that did exactly that. So I got an, I got a tweet uh, from Galia, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, your name. Sorry, I, I apologize um, if I got that hopelessly wrong. Uh, Hi, I need help on how to make a script uh, of a button which gets a value of each UI toggle component and stores that those values in an array uh, using Unity in C Sharp. Well, let's get... Um, uh, Galia sorted out with this, um, and let's start coding after the fade. So I'm going to start off with um, two two folders here for my project. I'm going to create one called Scenes, one called Script. Um, and so I came up with a, a scenario of what I want to do, um, and basically I want to show you how to to save them to. Um, uh, save the toggle switches to an array, but I'm not going to wire up the the events manually. I'm going to actually use, uh, sorry, um, automatically using the, the UI. Uh, we're going to do it manually in code. Um, so bear with me, we're actually going to use what's called a, an anonymous method um, or anonymous function, depending on where you're from, um, just because we don't, we don't need to do anything um, we don't need to do anything outside the class. Everything's going to be done inside the, the class that we create. So I'm going to go ahead and create the uh, the UI elements. So I'm going to create the first toggle switch. And the first toggle switch, I'm going to go to label and change that to white. So we can actually see what's going on here. And I'm going to, the scenario I came up with is that we're going to, we're going to have like user settings. So we're going to have things that the user would, would check off and on. So uh, we've got toggle here, so I'm going to call this anti-alias, or lack of a better thing. And then I'm going to create another two here, where I'm going to drag them from the pen. Yeah, okay, so this one is going to be called uh, rumble. And we're going to have this one going to be called um, high contrast. Okay, so three options that you would find in, in, a, in a game. And the idea is that we're going to use uh, these three options here, these three toggle boxes, to save those values into an array. Okay. But what we're not going to do is we're not going to wire any on value changed events down here. Normally you just do plus and then select the object and then wire everything up that way. Um, as seen in the previous video, which is shown on the little info card up there. We're not going to do that. We are going to do it inside code. So for that, I'm going to create a script called um, call it settings controller and I'm going to create a new empty blank object and I'm also going to call that settings controller if it'll let me and I am just going to drag that onto the settings controller so that's my script onto my settings controller let go and then it gets added there and then I'm going to boot up Visual Studio. All right, so this is our base visual. This is our base code for our controller. So our controller is going to take in an array of um, uh, toggle switches, and then it's going to manually add an event handler onto each toggle switch, uh, toggle button. I should say. And it's going to take those values and it's going to store them inside the internal Boolean array. Now, we're going to assume a few things here. We're going to assume that the default value for each button is checked and that um, the user hasn't changed any settings. So we haven't done any saving and loading. We can do a part two to this uh, if, you, if you want, 
uh, where we can actually save this out onto to a uh, disk. Now, internally, we want to represent each of these values as just a, a boolean value, but externally, we want to get values, get the the check value from the toggle switches. So we're going to have a public toggle. You notice that, that you got a red squiggly there, that's easy fix. You just do control dot and then you want to add the using for unity engine.ui. Um, and then we're gonna have a start function. The start function is gonna do pretty much all the work uh, for this, um, but it needs to um, set up the, the, the array here based on the number of toggles that we have here. Uh, and then set those default values. So the way we're going to do that is uh, we're going to create our start settings equals new bool toggles dot length and i equals zero um, i less than toggles dot length i plus plus settings i equals true. Okay, so that's as we've set up our boolean array. Now what we need to do is we need to go through each of those toggle values and set the array. Now we already have a for loop here, so let's just co-op that. Um, toggle t equals toggles i. So we're taking each toggle in turn. Uh, and you notice that there is an on value changed field here. Uh, this field is already set, it already has a value, and we want to add a listener to it. Now, the listener is basically what this is doing is it's effectively doing exactly the same thing as you would do down here. So on value changed, you see it takes in a boolean value. So on value changed is this here. So you would do, um, let's say you would, you, you would have a traditional way of doing this, which would be public void um, checkbox bool check. So this is the sort of traditional thing that you would do. You would have this here. Uh, and then you would add the array by doing on by change, add listener, and then you would specify check box. Okay, and you're done. At that point, you're done. But unfortunately, this only takes the, the Boolean value. It doesn't take the index into the array, which means that we're back to square one. How do we set this value depending on which toggle button has been selected? Well, it turns out we can use we don't need to. We just need to pass in something that takes in a boolean value. But um, we can actually manipulate a little bit more in code. So we can create with C sharp. Uh, I think it's C sharp anyway. There's a lot of other languages use it, but we they have this concept of anonymous methods where you don't need a name. You can just specify the the parameters wrapped inside brackets. And then an equals and a greater than, and then you can specify the body of the the, the, um, the function. But you can use values from around here. So I'm going to alter this. Instead of saying checkbox checked, I'm going to take this in as uh, an index value here. And I am going to say settings index equals check. I'm going to make that private because we don't need to expose this to the outside world. In fact, we don't need to expose anything to the outside world uh, unless we want to save things and do stuff like that. But for, for the purposes of this video, we don't want to do anything else. So that's our checkbox there. So our add listener is then going to be checkbox and then it's going to be some index value, which is i, I'm going to say. And then the check is going to be t dot. Um, uh, checked, whatever that is. So that's kind of what we're going to be calling, but obviously we can't do that. It's not as easy as that. 
So the add listener is actually going to uh, take in another couple of parameters, but first we need to get the, the index. Now the index is just going to be a copy of i, so I'm just going to do int index equals i. The reason we do that is that um, if we don't do that, then i is going to contain 3, which means that this value in here is going to contain 3. So um, we, we don't want that to happen. So our function actually looks like this. And you'll see there's no red squiggly lines anywhere because this is actually what the function looks like. So we're adding our listener, which is this listener here. Um, and that's it. That's that's all we have to do. We just have to add a little bit more code inside this line here. And the code we're going to add in here is checkbox, which is our function down here. And then we specify the index, which is index. And then whether it's checked or not. And that's it. That's all we need to do. So if I set a breakpoint here, and then we wait for it to compile, I save this scene, I call it UI toggle array, um, and I attach to Unity. So. Um, so this is our zeroth element, this is our first element, and this is our second element. So if I untap this, you see that nothing has happened other than, you know, the UI changes. And because that never got called for some unknown reason. Hmm. It's not debugging. Uh, that's not good. I'll tell you why. Whoops. Um, okay. <laughs> Let's set the toggles of values. So over here we have these toggles. Um, we didn't actually set them. You see it says size zero. So I'm going to select my settings controller, click on the uh, little padlock over there, and then I'm going to select each one of these toggles. So I'm going to choose that one, that one, and that one. And I'm going to drag them to the toggles here, the to toggles field. And now, once I save this, You'll see that when I tap this, it goes into this anonymous method, and when I press F10, you see it goes into here, and you see my index is 2, and the checkbox is false. So our settings, true, 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 and then our settings becomes true, true, false. So our settings were true, true, false, and now they become true, true, true. And that works for every single one of these. Okay. So that's how you can take an array of uh, toggles, toggle buttons and store them in an actual Boolean array. So there you go, taking toggle buttons and storing them in a Boolean array. Fairly easy, not much code, it's what, 10 lines of code there, uh, not, not a huge uh, heck of a lot. But it'd be handy, you know, if you have like a, a settings file or, or those kind of things and you want to, you want to store those um, uh, in, a, in a file, uh, in a settings file, even, for your game. The settings for your game. So yeah, um, thank you very much for watching, um, and until next time, um, keep coding. And uh, yeah, just uh, have fun and, and, you know, enjoy yourselves, I guess. Um, you don't need my permission to do that. You can enjoy yourselves as much as you want. 
Um, so if you liked the video, then uh, thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, thumbs down. Uh, please leave a comment. Uh, feel free to subscribe and you get timely reminders. Uh, if you want to, to follow me on Twitter, I'm, I'm right here-ish, there. Um, yeah, um, thanks. Um, cheers. Thanks for watching.